So the next thing we're going to do is the, um, we're going to post to those little arms, those little, they're called French arms, the top of the arms. And the thing about these is they're a little tricky because um, in, in the, traditionally, the tradition with these arms is, is horse hair. And uh, they would really layer this with horse hair. And horse hair um, as a batting is probably the best batting you can get, but we don't do a lot of horse hair today because of the expense. So we kind of have to recreate that with foam. But um, when I took these off, the only thing left on the chair really that I liked was the fact that they, there's little styrofoam, uh, little pads here, which kind of, it, it gives it a little oomph, which kind of like that idea, instead of just putting foam on it. So I guess if you were gonna do this, um, if you didn't have that, you'd take maybe a, a layer of uh, rubberized horse hair and, and put it on there, and then put the foam on. So I'm gonna put the foam on one arm, I'm gonna upholster one arm, and then we're gonna go to the back, okay? So we're gonna start stapling this. The trick to stapling this is to try to leave, don't go all the way to the edge, try to leave that tack line for your fabric. Okay, and I'm going to just, I, I'm going to start with the front couple of staples and then the back couple of staples. Then what I'm going to do is I have this oversized, so I'm going to turn the chair to show you this. I'm going to have to trim this down before I staple it. That's how I like to do it. Because what I want to do is, I want to be able to see, well, we're, we're kind of challenged here because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of wood, so we're going to have to just staple it down. I'm trying to keep a tack line. It's a little difficult though because, like I said, there's not much wood there. So I'm going to come around this way, and actually I probably don't even have to trim this down. It's right where I want it to be. Normally you'd want to keep this a little bit, you know, trim it down, keep it a little oversized. I got that right where I want it. It's a nice arm actually. It feels like the horse horse head. You know, foam will duplicate the feel of horse head to do it properly. So I'm going to take a little bit like, like a half a layer of cotton. Now the nice thing about cotton, and I've mentioned this in other videos before, is that as a batting, the only thing you have to do is trim it with your hands. You don't have to staple it. So you don't need a whole row of staples. If you did Dacron, you would have to staple it. So that's why one of the, another reason why I'm choosing uh, cotton as a batting. Okay, so now I'm going to grab one of the arms. So I actually had this cut um, on the arms. I don't think it really matters. The pattern really matters on the arms because the arm, the arm, the pattern is so big. The arms are so small. I don't think it really matters. Although I did I'll show you, I did match these two. So I guess I will try to match them. So, you know, you have to make these decisions about fabric placement patterns and all that. Um, it's a case by case. Um, this fabric, uh, the interesting thing about this fabric is that um, I picked a center, but when I put it on the seat, I didn't like it as a center, so I adjusted it a little bit, uh, if you remember that from the last previous uh, segment. And um, the reason that you can do that is because you've cut your fabric, you've allowed for this, things like this. It's, it's cut three inches over size. So it allowed me, my eye actually took over for me rather than the, what I picked as a center. I hope you can follow that, what I mean by that. So since I, since I did uh, match these, I will, I will try to get them looking the same. So right, right about there, okay? And, and that's right about. It's not a perfect, it's, this isn't a fabric that has a perfect center. Isn't that interesting? So I'm going to fold the fabric on the back and staple it. I'm going to fold it on the front. I'm going to give it a little tug and staple it. Now I'm giving you guys a great tip here. Instead of stapling this down and then going back and trimming it, you can, you can, if you stretch this the right way, if you really know this technique, you can fold it and, and staple it. You can't do that on the seat because there's too much stretching that needs to be done. But on the arms, there's not as much stretching and it really is gonna help you um, with the trimming. Because sometimes trimming, um, it's better to fold if you can. And you can only do that in, in, in these cases. So I'm gonna fold this and I'm gonna staple it. I'm gonna put a staple there. And I'm going to come on the other side. I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to fold that down. This is this is really cleans it up right away. And staple that. And now 
for the stretching. Okay, we're gonna take this. Try to stretch that. Admittedly, this is a little harder to do your stretching than than just stapling without folding. You can get your stretching. I guess this is this could be for advanced some advanced techniques I'm showing you. is going to cover up any any imperfections this this uh, sometimes you can get a little pleat like this sometimes you need a little pleat that doesn't look so bad I'm counting on my double piping to cover up a lot of a lot of the wrinkling around the edges, around the corners, I mean. Let's give that a tuck. A little pleat on the back. That's it. So I think what I'm gonna do on the other arm. I wasn't gonna show you the other arm, but I think on the other arm what I want to do is show you the other technique, which is just pin tacking and then trimming later. I'll just show you the difference. Okay, so now I'm going to show, I'm going to, same thing with the foam, and then we're going to trim our cotton on there. But in this one, I'm not going to fold it. I am going to Try to line up my center points there. Actually, because I matched it, I'm going to take my tape measure and measure measure my pattern from to the front, which is two inches pattern to the front there. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer, get it to where I want. That's two inches. So, so this is going to look pretty this is going to match. Okay, so instead of folding, I'm going to pin staple, not all the way in, or, or for real it, uh, beginners, I would use the tacks. I would pin tack this. Don't use your staple gun. And I'm going to, these aren't permanent in other words. I'm going to stretch this to the back, get a, a pin staple there, and then on this side, I'm going to pin staple, you know, about three of them. Now on this side, I don't have to pin staple. I feel confident that I can stretch this and staple it for, for sure. Okay? That. Now I get one in the middle and then I come down to the end and I stretch to the end and staple. And stretch this and staple. Okay, then I have to go on this side. See, I think for beginners, you're gonna find you have more control of your work when you pin tack. And I think this is it. I'm demonstrating that right now. Uh, it's a little bit longer process, but you have more control. Okay, so I just undid the, there's three pin tacks over here. I undid the, I undid the uh, one on the left, and I'm gonna stretch it now and stop stapling that. I know it's how I'm coming over, like stretching from over there. Okay, I'm going to undo the last pin tack towards the back, and then I'm going to stretch to the back, and then I'm going to staple that all down. Now that middle middle staple should come out, but um, and then reset. But it looks like it's pretty good. Okay, now what I'm going to do 
is around here. See, I'm just, I'm not even going to pleat that. I'm just going to kind of, because you don't have much padding, right? Look. And then over here. Now, you could have this whole thing yeah, for, you, for your beginners, pin tacked. And then, like I said, go back and staple it. If you're satisfied with it, if you're not satisfied with it, you could take a couple of the pin tacks out and put them back in. Keep doing that. Don't commit. You know, don't commit to the to the uh, pin tack or to an, a staple all the way in or a tack all the way in. Okay. So then, now this this the difference is this is going to have to be trimmed. Okay. I don't even really need my spring mist that I use in the seat for this. Somebody in one of the other videos said, you talk too much, no, you don't have to talk as much. That was a guy, of course, you know. But uh, a lot of people like the, the talking, because um, they, they learn. It depends on what your learning style is. Uh, some people can turn the volume off and just watch. I, I'm, I might even be one of those people, but I think part of, especially for beginners, I think, I think talking it out is good. It gives them the confidence. I know a lot of what I say isn't, re isn't necessary for the work, but I think it's necessary for the learning. All right, there we go. So we're done with the arms. Now we're going to go to the inside back. Um, on these French style um, chairs, we uh, do the outside back has to be put on first, believe it or not. And it's recessed in the back, like we see, right? So that's actually a desired look. French, the French came up with that. And so the uh, we'll look at our back, we, both of them are cut the same. So uh, I'm going to line it up. I have a center point down here. I'm going to line it up. And I am going to staple. I'm going to staple three staples on the bottom. Then I'm going to stretch it up to the top. I'm not stretching it that tight. It's taut. And it's a hand stretch. I'm going to get a few more up at the top stretch. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to the bottom and I'm going to get around the curve probably to about that point on both sides. Okay, and you want to be stretching up no further than the last staple that you put on the bottom. That makes sense because if you're pulling, you could be pulling forever on, a, on the fabric if there's nothing holding on the opposite side. And you have to kind of almost look at uh, oval shaped backs as square, okay? Um, I'm stretching, I'm only stretching up, okay? I'm not stretching side to side. That's very important. You have to do the middle first stretch on a curve too. It's curved. Not only is it oval, but it's curved. Okay? So I'm almost done with my up, up and down stretch. Okay, now at this point, very gently, you hardly need anything side to side. Very gently pull and staple. Very gentle, not, not like the other one. Alright, grab some staples. Over here. Very gentle, because you don't want to pull the fabric off the curve. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this back about an inch or an inch and a half. All the way around. And I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to get staples in between. Okay. Covered on the staples on this. What we want to do is I'm going to turn this up now and check to make sure none of the staples went south and uh, came through the wood. Hope that that doesn't happen. I've been very careful about it. So I'm going to run my finger gently all the way around to make sure that nothing came through. It looks good, doesn't it? I love that. Love that recessed look. It's it's really pretty. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you something else from the old 
material that was used. You know, oftentimes I don't like using cardboard, but this cardboard is so formed nicely to the back. I think it's going to be okay to reuse. You know, it's okay to reuse some things. I'm a big believer in that. But before you put that on, you need to take a half a layer of cotton, only a half a layer, and put it as, a, as, a, as, as an in-between piece, right? And you're going to trim that. You just want to be away from the edge a good two inches or so. This is like a buffer between, between the fabric and the cardboard, right? Place our cardboard in there, and we're going to staple that. Don't need too many staples on this. The fabric actually, the inside back fabric is going to hold that up nicely, but do need to make sure, especially near the top, maybe grab a couple more staples because you have some force downward people sit in it. Okay, now I'm going to check this now to make sure that the staples didn't come through before I go down to the next step. And I want to show you something. Look how nice that is. So I'm also going to feel around here to make sure there's no loose staple that went in between the two. Just be careful. Always check like that. Okay, we're going to bring it down. And the foam that was on here was no good, so I cut a new piece of foam. And I'm going to put this on. Stapling this a little closer to the edge, just so I know where the staples are going. You don't want to go through at this point, doing such a nice job on everything else. We don't want a staple coming through, but I'm still trying to leave a little bit for my other staples that are going to have to be for the, for the uh, fabric. Again, run your figure gently around, make sure there's no staple. Oh, don't trust your eye, by the way. You really do need to commit to your finger. All right, so now I'm going to take a half a layer of cotton on the front. You know, using the right materials is so important. I can't emphasize this too much. You know, and um, we do have a referral for you if you want to contact me through email. I mentioned this, I'm going to keep mentioning this because it's so important. We're using a triple A grade cotton on this um, and it's it's a really refined cotton. That means that a lot of the seeds and plant is, the larger pieces are taken out. It's a really good material. I like it batting wise. I love cotton because you know again you don't have to staple it. See I don't have to staple it. I'm, not, I'm saving a row of staples. So it's upholstery on Broadway at gmail.com if you want to find out um, where you can get a lot of these good supplies. I'd be happy to help you. Okay, so the next step is fabric. So um, I'm going to line it up with my center point. And you know, I've, I've, I've come to believe that on this fabric it's more of a, it's, it's by eye. I'm using my eye more on this. Um, so I think I'm, I'm making a decision now, do I pin, pin tack this? Um, I think I'm going to have to pin tack this instead of trying to fold this because there's a little bit more padding involved in the arms. So we showed you both ways on the arms, pin tacking and folding. I think I'm going to go with the pin tacking on this. So I'm going to start at the bottom and one, two, three, right? And these are not permanent. Those are not permanent on the bottom. However, on the top, um, if you guys at home want to pin, pin tack these also, you can. But it depends on the fabric too, you know, what you're using for fabric. I think this fabric though is going to be able to be stretched up to the top and actually can begin stapling. I don't have to pin staple at all. Okay. So people ask, what's the difference between taking a live class and doing YouTube videos? In a live class, I'm able to determine what's, how much stretch a certain fabric uses. Um, I think the one-on-one, -on -one, the tactile, is, is so important. Um, that, that 
one-on-one -on -one is usually how I teach. Um, I'm trying. I'm going to try to. We, we talked upcoming. I keep mentioning it. We are going to uh, try these uh, classes online. Uh, I hopefully, what we'll do is be able to um, do a little bit of that one-on-one -on -one through the videos. We'll see how it goes. I, I think. I think there'll be. I think you'll learn more uh, with these classes with with a beginner. Um, so we, we're looking forward to that. Okay, getting back to this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I have the, the top staples. Um, now I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to remove one staple on one side. And then I'm going to stretch down, stretch down, get that restapled, and then I'm going to staple a few more that way. I'm going to undo this one. And I'm going to stretch down. And I'm going to staple the bottom. So the bottom is all stapled now. So what we need to do, very similar to the to the um, outside bag, I'm going to start. Now I can start stapling. I feel confident I can staple all the way. I can staple all the way to about the arm there. And the same thing on this side. Okay. Then I'm going to stretch from that point up. I'm not going. Notice how I don't go to my sides. People want to go to the sides right away. Don't do that because it's a curve. Okay? I'm stretching up. See that? I'm not stretching side to side. It's always up. So it's up until you get to right about even, even I'm going to put another staple in here. And I'm going to get another stretch this way. Up. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to get one or two more down here and another stretch up. So really, reality, from the side, there's only about six inches each side that I'm going to be stretching, and not much. Because if you stretch it too much, you take the curve, you take the fabric right off the curve, and it has the opposite effect. It's going to wrinkle out. So just very gently, I'm pulling. If you've properly stretched up and down, you hardly need any stretch at all. Look at that. Look how nice that is. Okay, and then very little stretch. Side to side stretch. Very little. Can't see that enough. There you go. So we're moving along on this chair really well. I like the way that looks. Um, our next step is just to trim this, like you've seen in the other the other parts of the chair. And then the next thing we do, the next part, and the last part is going to be the double piping. <laughs> 